Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Hard Time series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode, I need to deal with all of my extant missions, and that includes the one mission in orbit around Duna, which already has all of its science done, right? It's just sitting there waiting to be transferred back from Duna to Kerbin. It's in a safe orbit. And then there's also the three missions around EVE. These missions need to get their science done, except for the one that it was doing the science in space. The Science Junior 2 there, you see, that one's done. It's the other two that haven't uh, done their thing because they're both landers. One is going to land on Eve, never to come back, and then the other one is going to land on Gilly. We take care of the one that is headed for Gilly first, and that's the one you see here with the highly eccentric orbit. And so the first thing I need to do is transfer that to Gilly. And here it is, uh, the little lander. And unfortunately, it's got a high inclination with respect to Gilly, 12. 12 degrees and try as I might to adjust that and do the burn towards Gilly at the same time I decide that I have to really do the inclination burn first this is going to be part of a big problem I didn't realize it would take this much to transfer to Gilly and this lander does not have enough as it turns out and we will soon see that uh, but eventually I get the transfer at least, though you see I had to boost out of periapsis to a very high orbit. I go way off, overshooting Gilly, and then come back to meet up with Gilly. And that's just because my orbit was already so elongated, sort of in the wrong direction. It would have been better if it was uh, had the apoapsis in a different direction, but couldn't do anything about that now. Well, I could. I could have dipped my orbit back into the atmosphere to lower my apoapsis, but at the time it seemed like a waste. There are other factors that uh, will make this whole thing interesting. In fact, I also misjudged how much it would take to transfer back to Kerbin. What you see here is uh, the fact that if I turn around, it uh, changes whether I have a encounter or not with Gilly. Gilly is very tiny, after all. So yeah, I was satisfied with this. This was close enough. I could do a tiny little adjustment later on to uh, make sure I hit it, but uh, it was basically within 200 kilometers. So I turned to my other missions, and in particular I wanted to focus on the mission that was going to make the landing on EVE, and you can see here I'm uh, aiming to get the periapsis within the atmosphere, but also right at the start of daylight, so that that would uh, ensure that I could land in the daylight instead of on the nighttime side. So this is what this burn is about. I could of course just rely on Eve's atmosphere to retro burn me, but in that case there was a high probability that I would end up landing on the nighttime side, which I didn't want. So I aimed for a more controlled descent, and in fact the altitude I aimed for in Eve's atmosphere was not enough to bring me down. So I had to retro burn and used all my fuel for that. But uh, you see here, uh, definitely landing on the daylight side and trying to aim for land. And you can see my cursor is very, very hopefully pointed at the continents that I want to land at. <laughs> uh, this is uh, sort of my way of sort of leading the spacecraft towards that piece of land. A little strip there, the island. But, uh, you know, the atmosphere had other ideas, <laughs> so I ended up just a bit short. Uh, the atmosphere was just too thick for me. But anyway, uh, that's not a problem for our science, actually. It just means that we'll be doing the science in Eve's waters instead of Eve's land. So here I get one goo container flying over Eve. We've got two goo containers, so we can't uh, reserve both for the surface. So I do that, but the other instruments I can reserve for the surface, and I just do that. Parachute deployment. Uh, tried to do it as low as possible because, of course, it slows our descent down, and it really doesn't need to be much slower. And then finally, splash down. There we go. So. Observe Mystery Goo. Uh, hope that it doesn't break apart when it flops. It doesn't. Okay, so Mystery Goo from Eve's Oceans. Ah, it's Eve's Oceans instead of Eve's Waters because we are not too sure whether it's water or not. But, uh, okay. Material Study from, from the Oceans. 
oceans of what, we do not know. And then there was that one goo container I did from in the air, and we need to transmit that data because I saved it. I didn't want to transmit it while in the air because it might deplete my electric charge and prevent me from controlling the vessel. So yeah, we transmit that here. And now I need to roll it in order to reach the barometer and thermometer. I already tried to go below the surface and couldn't quite get it, but now you see here I barely am able to catch sight of the barometer, and I get that reading, and I send it off. And then trying to roll to see the thermometer here. Uh, doesn't quite work. Come on. There we go. Got sight of it. No, don't want to toggle display, just log temperature. There we go. Alright, transmit for 50% of the full value. And with that, our science with this particular unit, this this probe is done. We've fulfilled the contract to transmit scientific data from the surface of EVE. And that is a part of the full EVE exploration contract. The only part we haven't done in that contract is actually transmitting or recovering scientific data from orbit, which is what our other Science Junior 2 mission is supposed to do. And so we'll have to wait for that. But the next thing I want to do is turn back to our Gilly mission and fulfill that. I don't really realize how much trouble this Gilly mission is in, but uh, for now all we need to do is correct its orbit a little bit at the ascending node there. So I just try and tilt it in so that it, uh, it can uh, meet up with uh, Gilly as planned. It's just a 2.1 meter per second burn in order to correct this part. But you see how different my orbit is right now from that of Gilly's? Well, you need to correct that. And the only way to correct that, in the case of Gilly, because it doesn't have an atmosphere, is to do a burn. And I'm not fully appreciating that fact at this point. Uh, I'm not too sure why, but the, the, the difference in our orbits have, has to be uh, reconciled. And right here, where I enter Gilly's sphere of influence and try and get into orbit around it, uh, is when I realize how much that is going to cost. You see, when you think about Gilly, you think, okay, it's a tiny little potato roid kind of planet, uh, moon. And it's not going to cost that much because, you know, it costs hardly anything to land on Gilly. But no, just to get into orbit around Gilly takes me more than 600 meters per second, and that is pretty much all my fuel. And so you see me doing that burn here, realizing that now. I observe the mystery goo in space high over Gilly. I keep that data because I don't want to transmit while I'm doing a maneuver. But I will, uh transmit that soon but here that's orbit but that's more than orbit you can see it's actually uh, crashing into the planet which I at this point don't mind because that's gonna have to happen alright so I transmit that data that I had picked up all nice and safe didn't really take much electric charge so there wasn't really that much risk but now I'm going to aim to crash safely I uh, slow down as much as I can using my remaining fuel and then uh, let uh, Gilly's gravity do the rest of the work. So it's all a matter of trying to save, uh, survive a collision really. And being that that's the case, I uh, try and do as much science here as possible since if I lose this vehicle I should just uh, get as many science points as I can. But I need to reserve some Science, scientific instruments for the surface, otherwise uh, I'm not going to be able to fulfill the contract if this survives. Of course, if collisions were measured based on acceleration, this wouldn't be a problem because, well, the acceleration of Gilly, uh, Gilly's gravity is not that high, but it's actually mass times velocity, the momentum that determines the, for, the, the nature of the collision. And uh, our velocity is right now at 15 meters per second, which is more than a normal landing speed. And so, but uh, that's not with respect to the surface though, that's our orbital speed. And this is what happens. I never actually switched to surface and it never switches it for me. So yeah, ricochet for the win. Uh, so I'm going to have to ricochet a few times to uh, sort of get rid of my horizontal velocity here. And of course the vertical velocity will be handled by the gravity anyway. Uh, but, yeah, once I ricocheted for the first time, I knew uh, it was possible. And you can see that I've actually fulfilled the contract for landing on Gilly with that first little bounce. 
But uh, here I try ambitiously to get a mystery goo observation along the surface, but it turns out that counts as in space near Gilly. Uh, you might think that's ridiculous to try and do it when you're not still down, but it's not. I have some experience with this. So I, uh, I wait for another ricochet. That ricochet was a little bit off. Uh, it uh, killed the horizontal velocity, but gave me too much vertical. But this one, as we get back to 1x time warp, this one worked. And we're sort of skimming along the surface, and I tried a mystery goo observation. And there you go, mystery goo observation from Gilly's surface. Transmit that data to fulfill the contract. Now, we don't have any fuel left in this, so we're not bringing anything back. And that's fair enough, because as it turns out, it's going to take a lot more delta V to return than I thought it would, so this thing was not going to be able to return no matter what. I put on the brakes, uh, th that's just uh, in the hope that, <laughs> I don't know, that probably, that, that wouldn't do anything, no. Uh, but ultimately we come to a stop, it's fine, it's all fine, and that's what I wanted, I wanted to make sure this came to a stop, and so it's going to be standing as a monument on Gilly. Okay. And uh, with that, let's turn to other things. Alright, so uh, back at uh, base, we take a look at the contract screen, and I notice, I notice science data from space around EVE. Now, we haven't actually transmitted or recovered the data on that probe, so I decided to take that contract because it'll just give us another bonus. Speaking of which, now we have to focus on the probes that have to be returned to Kerbin which are the two that took science from space around uh, Eve and Duna. And trying to find the right planetary alignment, I figure that uh, Duna, the Duna mission is the one that will have to be returned first. Not all the way, I just have to start its burn first. So, Duna mission. And I saw that it was about 75 degrees, uh, its carbon has to be 75 degrees behind Duna. It seemed that way in that screen. But uh, as I check that I have all my data, I figure out uh, once I go to the map screen that uh, that uh, tracking station screen was a little bit deceptive. Not only that, but I'm in a particularly bad orbit for the transfer back. So you can see now it looks more like 90 degrees. It looks like uh, there's a bigger gap and that's not as optimal. But I'm sort of in a rush because all of this stuff took a lot longer than, of course, this video makes it seem. And... Uh, I did not have all the time in the world to do all this stuff. So I try and do it as quickly as possible and I double check that I have the Delta V to do it here instead of going back to the tracking station and time warping a lot. And I do. Uh, this probe does have the necessary Delta V to handle this burn. So, And you see my mouse doing a little bit of a double take there as I suddenly got an encounter with Kerbin at 77 kilometers. was not expecting it to be that close. But uh, here we go, doing the trans Kerbin injection. And we get even closer than 77 kilometers here, so no need for mid-course plane change. Trying to get in the atmosphere at the correct altitude for uh, orbital capture. Not an orbital capture, really just a capture right down to the surface. And so here it is, the departing Duna sequence. Duna floats away with respect to our spacecraft, and uh, we head out into interplanetary space. The encounter actually looks like a Holman transfer, even though it was done at the incorrect time. But you see here, as I time warp to get uh, the EVE mission into the proper position for a return, that we seem to lose our encounter on the Duna mission. Uh, that's not as much of a problem as you might think. You might think, oh, well, you time warped, you know, time warping across the transitions between series of influence, horrible stuff. Actually, it wasn't that bad. And I'll show you that in a sec. I am worried at this point, though, so I check on the mission and try and fix it. But uh, you'll see what actually happened was we ended up having a Minmus encounter. There it is, Minmus encounter. And that's what actually messed us up. I uh, I could just uh, not do this burn, and we would get into the sphere of influence of Kerbin as planned. But I want to get that uh, close encounter and make sure it happens, so I force the issue and I make the burn to get close to Kerbin. Cost me about uh, 15 meters per second, and uh, we get it. So 
Once again, plotted for a, a arrow breaking at Kerbin already. No need for any adjustment there. Okay. Now the return to Kerbin from Eve turns out to be quite a problem. You can see uh, I'm plotting at a thousand, one hundred thousand, two hundred ish, and then there's a three hundred meter per second mid course plane change. I'm used to it being a lot less than that. This was either a particularly horrible location or more more likely a very bad orbit to start out. I figure it's a bad orbit uh, around Eve, so what I do is I retro burn at apoapsis in order to drop my periapsis and have Eve bring my orbit down. My goal is to use the overf effect, which is an effect that boosts your potential delta v. Basically for every little bit of delta v you end up uh, making your orbit higher than it would have otherwise been. So I try and use that, but this is a bad idea. I bring my orbit down by letting Eve airbreak me carefully. So you can see here, not very high, 75 kilometers, not a big deal. Uh, it's relatively safe in terms of we're not going to crash on Eve, and I actually go around twice. But when I actually go and plot the course, you'll see it actually costs more. And th that's that. It, there's a balance between the benefit of having a high orbit and the benefit of the Oberth effect, and I didn't actually do the calculation for that, and it turned out that I ended up badly. Here, so I ended up having to pay an extra 150 meters per second for my troubles, which was uh, very disappointing. But we barely had enough delta V to handle this. I did the calculation again, so I decided to go with it. So because again, uh, after having messed up the first time, I didn't want to mess up again. So here we go. Transcarbon injection from Eve this time. The purple planet, uh, not really helping us out this time. It's helped me out on previous series, but not this one. Okay, the mid course plane change had to be adjusted, of course. 382 meters per second, really hefty. And probably the best, the in previous series, maybe what happened was I ended up being at the ascending or descending node so I could do the plane change and a transfer at the same time. In that case it would have saved delta v. Maybe that's why I ended up being uh, so far off this time. So anyway, uh, departing Eve montage. You can see we have a tiny bit of fuel there. This is the mid-course plane change and let's see how close we end up on the fuel. Yep, tight fuel margins there. Still good enough to to get close to Kerbin here, though I have to do some maneuvering. There we go. Getting within the atmosphere. And that will definitely bring us down to the surface. Okay, so I'll turn it the right way around because it's no good at pointing down like that. And otherwise, we can leave this mission be. And now it is time to bring the Duna mission in and to retrieve our juicy science. So, and of course, fulfill the contract, thereby bringing us much funds. So here we go into Kerbin's sphere of influence, and it's actually a pretty, pretty decent uh, approach right now. Uh, even equatorial and all that. But uh, I wasn't quite satisfied with the periapsis. I really wanted to make sure this thing came down. I wasn't interested in making orbit or anything like that. Even though I had fuel to retroburn, even if it did make orbit. Maybe I even had enough fuel to hit the KSC closer, but I was a bit impatient here, admittedly. Want to get on to other things in this series after having done these Eve and Duna missions. So, approach to Kerbin. Coming in on the dark side, as you can see. And passing over the KSC, so not coming close to that this time. Not on the other side of the planet, at least. Okay. 
flame effects confirming that we have been going at a very quick speed but the atmosphere is doing its job not too sure where I'm landing here because it's in the dark so when will the uh, the parachutes uh, pop out and they go full extension at 500 meters which means I'm splashing down in the ocean so I prepare for that I try and uh, give some thrust from the engine to get uh, to four meters per second and as the fuel runs out a bit it lightens up the craft so we end up at about 3.8 at splashdown so here we go splashdown and flop and recover okay so 258.6 science earned you can see the science there. That's not including the science that we got from the contracts. We got some bonus science from those. And of course we got much funds from those. So I wasn't too worried about the fact that getting only 77.4% of our, our craft value back. We've got more than a million funds for the first time in this series, in fact. So, looking good for the future of this agency. Now, getting the EVE mission back. So we come in for our encounter with Kerbin, and this one is actually going in a polar trajectory, so no real uh, easy way to hit the KSC like this. And I certainly didn't have enough fuel left to do any sort of uh, burning to adjust the orbit, so I just let it be. And now, the since it is the final mission that we're going to be dealing with, the final phase that we're going to be dealing with in this episode, I do the full Kerbin approach montage. You can see the the moon spinning around Kerbin there as we come in. I can't really spot Minmus anywhere. So you're at 30,000 kilometers and it's getting closer. Fuel situation is as you see there. 20,000 kilometers. 15 have to be worried about uh, time warp here. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and out of warp speed. <laughs> okay, so here we go, hitting the atmosphere. And now I've got a lot of mountains around me. And I'm worried about that because those can knock you around quite a lot. And you can see my cursor as usual trying to indicate to the computer where I actually want to land as if that's going to make any difference but you know there there that little uh, green patch that uh, grass valley in the midst of these mountains trying for that will I make it I get the parachutes out as uh, quickly as I think is appropriate much quicker than you could actually do in real life of course and it's looking okay and indeed uh, here we are looks like uh, relatively even ground grass will probably still tip over but not dangerously full deployment uh, so that means that the ground is at 600 meters or so so at around 750 I start thinking about giving the engine some thrust there we go again getting to 4 meters per second is the goal here and touchdown and tip over and it's intact okay so recover vessel come on uh, there we go all right, so uh, pretty much the exact same science, right? 258.6. That's convenient. Um, much more funds. Uh, you can see we've added uh, about 200,000 funds up there. And uh, really the fact that we ended up really far away from the KSC, it would have uh, brought us about uh, 7,000 more funds to be right on the KSC. So not a big difference more important to just uh, get this done and in fact we have after fulfilling these contracts to do with uh, Eve and Duna we now have much funds uh, in fact uh, 
1,480,000 funds and much science, more than a thousand science. So, so with that, you will have to tune in next time to find out what I do with all this, all these resources that I have at my disposal now. I am going to leave that as a teaser uh, instead of uh, opening up uh, new technologies in the tech tree at the end of this episode. Uh, this is a short episode, but it took a long time to actually record it. So, uh, well, anyway, we'll cut it here and uh, I'll have to think about what I'm going to do with this. So with that, uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.